Welcome to Excel Tips. My name is Neil Blackwood and today we're going to look at a new feature in Excel called Analyze Data. Now you can download this data set from the In The Black website. So if you want to have a play around with the data, uh, this is just randomized data so it's okay to use it uh, and you can follow along if you'd like. There's been a lot of coverage recently about artificial intelligence and chat GPT which is a, a online artificial intelligence chat bot so you can ask it questions and it uh, responds with some long-form answers well did you know that Excel has its own built-in AI so in the latest versions of Excel there is an analyze data icon on the home ribbon Analyze Data looks for patterns in your data that it can use to create intelligence and personalize suggestions. So let's test it out. I've got some random data that I've created. It's sales data. There's about 6,000 odd rows of data there. So let's go and see what insights it can share with us. Uh, this does come with a warning. So this does require an internet connection to use, which means the data is going somewhere. So it could be going to a third party, uh, it could be going to Microsoft. After reading the Microsoft privacy policy for artificial intelligence, I was still not completely clear on how the data was used. I don't know if the data is anonymized. I don't know, you know what happens with the data that uh, it is analyzing. So I wouldn't share any sensitive data with this feature. It does work best with a formatted table. So what you're looking at now is a formatted table. It's got the color coding. Uh, it's been created using this format as table icon. I have covered that in previous articles. So there is a keyboard shortcut, control and the letter T. Uh, will convert a standard table into a formatted table. Formatted tables do have a lot of advantages. They automatically expand is one of them. Uh, and that works really well with pivot tables, which we are about to see because Analyze Data will create pivot tables for you. So let's see how it works. So all you need to do is click anywhere inside the table. Click the Analyze Data icon. Uh, it's going to look at it. It's fairly quick, so I'm not going to edit this part. So I'll let it, uh, you'll see how fast it analyzes the data. There you go. So it's done it already. Uh, it's given some uh, example or suggested questions here. Product code with average unit price higher than, say, 12. So that must be roughly the average, maybe. So it's figured that out which is the state for product name Gizmo, which I uh, don't know what that really means, but uh, there you go. Uh, one of the things about the AI is it might be different to the screenshots that are in the... Yes, it is. It is different to the screenshots that are in the article. So AI does develop. So this is the same data set, but it's coming out with different insights. The AI does improve over time. One of the things you can do here is... And again, it's even changed some of the terminology. So this one here now is called Discover Insights, whereas the screenshot there is Get Answers Like These. Just be aware that things are evolving, uh, and so some of these headings might change over time. But the cog hasn't changed, so there's this little cog icon. Now what that allows you to do is exclude columns. Some of the columns in your data might not really be relevant, uh, and at the moment they're getting included in the AI's analysis. So what you can do is click on that cog and what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove a few columns so that uh, it ignores those. So I'm going to get rid of size, color. I'm not interested in the GST or the total. The total is the uh, sales value plus the GST so I'm not interested in those. And click update. So it's going to go and do it again and again I'll leave it. I won't edit it and you can see that was really quick that it's, uh, it's come back with some suggestions. So let's have a look at what it's got now. So it's giving me sales value by state and customer category. That's interesting. So let's insert the pivot table. So what it does, and as you can see, it's weird that it's, it's, it's done some sort of formatting to the numbers. Normally, you don't get the comma format. 
Uh, but this has got the standard comma format, so it's actually got the decimal places as well, which is frustrating because in pivot tables, you tend to remove the decimal places for these types of reports. But there we go. So at the click of a button, it's created a pivot table, which is summarizing the data by state and by the customer category there. So that was pretty painless and pretty quick. So it is a useful feature. If you're new to pivot tables or you don't really know what pivot tables do, then this can give you some insights into how powerful pivot tables are. The beauty with using the formatted table as well is that if you add data to the bottom of this table, so let's say next month, then you are able to just go into the pivot table, right click and refresh and that will bring in the uh, the latest data. Now, this pivot table is not associated at all with the AI. It's the AI has created it and it's now a fully functional pivot table. So, there's no link or anything required. So, it is creating a pivot table for you. It it does use the word suggestion, so each suggestion has a, another number. So, let's go let's go back and look at what else it's got. Now this one is a pivot chart, so margin by source. So let's have a look at that, insert pivot chart. Now in terms of pivot charts in Excel, you have to have a pivot table to have a pivot chart. So they are sort of related. So it will create the pivot table for you and then link a pivot chart to it. And there we go. So it's even put some interesting entries in here it's got that that there it's in thousands so it's put a must have put a custom format on these uh, and saying that these are actually displayed in thousands which is interesting so there we go and we have a bar chart that's created breaking down the sources so this is the source column and showing the margin like some of these uh, you might not need uh, you could probably delete the headings there because it's already got margin in the heading so you don't really need those you probably leave the thousands in there interesting so there you go so that's a, a, a pivot chart created automatically at the click of a button which is uh, really handy so let's go back and have a look oh by the way um, I should mention these task panes on the the right hand side of the screen there's Excel has quite a few of them there's a, one built for charts as well they now sort of can be displayed one after the other. So if you're in a, a pivot table, you can see the pivot table fields, but you can go back to the analyze data one as well. So these icons on the right hand side allow you to sort of toggle between the uh, various task panes that might be open. Let's go right click and format then you'll see we get another task pane open up. So now there's a task pane for the charts. All of these task panes are accessible by the icons on the right hand side. Okay, let's go back to our data set and let's have a look at analyze data again. Okay, so we've got a few other things, unit price by customer category, unit price is relatively even. So it's even making an observation there that unit price is relatively even across state. Now unit price is an interesting one because it's just a value in here. So I think it's just averaging that value. Whereas really, to be honest, it should do a weighted average because these obviously these quantities are varying. So don't take everything it talks about at face value because it might uh, require a bit more analysis. So unit price is just uh, a figure in here uh, it's just averaging that it's not doing a weighted average on it which would require you know taking into account the quantity but um, just be aware that you know of that issue uh, now down the bottom here show all 12 results so there are some other um, things it's got to show so let's click on that and we can scroll down it's doing some highlighting here so source uh, the sales app the website have noticed to be high unit cost uh, associated with them. So that's an interesting one. So it's sort of highlighting those two and ignoring the email and phone. Uh, the frequency, doing a frequency chart uh, of unit cost, frequency of quantity, uh, sales app and the website have noticed to be higher sales value. So that obviously matches <laughs> with the, uh, the unit cost as well. Uh, frequency of margin, source and uh, sales app and website have noticed to be higher quantity. 
frequency of unit price. So you can see it's got a few. Uh, let's have a look at these uh, frequency ones. Ah, that's interesting. It's just a, that's just a standard chart that it's done there. So I haven't seen that before because normally it's a, a pivot chart, but that's just a standard chart. So that's something new uh, that I haven't seen before. So that's interesting. So it's got frequency. So these are the ranges of the frequencies and how many they are. So you can see it's, in, in this case, it's not a normal distribution. It doesn't uh, rise and fall. So uh, the frequency is more leaning towards this uh, left hand side here. So that's an interesting one. And that's a straight chart uh, on the data set. It's not going through a pivot table to get to the, uh, the chart. So that's, that's something new. So there you go. Uh, and again, that, that one's a pivot chart, whereas these are just a standard chart. So again, it's doing frequencies. So what frequencies do, there we go. So we've got <laughs> two charts here. Uh, you can see it's using the quantity column. Uh, and breaks it up between the various quantities there. So you can see that these quantities are fairly even. So these these are like buckets that it's doing a count on between 20, 110, 110 and 200, etc. Um, these are standard uh, type reports that uh, an auditor might do to make sure that things are sort of looking correct, if you like. So you can see these lower quantities are all fairly even, whereas the higher quantities, there's not many of those, which again, sort of makes sense. And again, this is random data, so it doesn't necessarily going to be, be a lot of insights that are uh, worthwhile picking up. So far, I haven't really done anything. All I've done is click the analyze data. I told it a few columns to ignore. And all of the stuff that's been happening has pretty much been just clicking a button to um, see what the analyze data has given us. Let's see what we can do by asking some questions. So I've got an example in the article in figure seven. Uh, here we go. Let's go top 10 customers in New South Wales. So, and notice that it, it popped up with New South Wales as a potential entry there. And I hit enter and it's got, here's our answer. They're showing the top 10 customers by quantity. So note that it's, it's looking at quantity for how it's judging the, the top 10. Uh, in New South Wales. So let's have a look at insert the pivot table. It's even given me a, a heading at the top, top 10 in customer by total quantity for New South Wales. Now, this is reasonably amazing. Um, it's giving us a report that's got a filter in attached. So you can filter, so you could change this to you know, Queensland quite easily. Uh, I asked for New South Wales, but it's giving me the ability to change it. Uh, because it's a, applied a filter to the pivot table. So it's sorted. So these are the, this is the top 10 and they've already sorted it. So we can see that Firestone Finance is the highest. So that is automatic. So it just did it. So let's try another one. This one is a little bit more obscure. So let's see what it does. So clear that one. It's already got some suggestions there down the bottom so let's see uh, this time I want the top five product codes well there, there's product code so it's pro I, I can use that for I'm starting to type widget so there's widget in VIC so there's Victoria so it's already identifying items now the widgets and the Victoria they're not column headings product code is a column heading but the widget and the Victoria, they're all they're all entries in a column, uh, and it's allowing you to select those. So let's hit enter. Looking for answers. This one's taking a bit longer, uh, and there we go. So showing top five in product code by quantity. Again, it's using quantity for product name widget. So insert the pivot. And there we go. So now we've got two filters. We've got a filter for the product and a filter for the state. So again, once this report's created, you could then modify this really easily to look at, uh, you know, gizmos instead of widgets and in a different state, Queensland instead of Victoria. So you can see that it is really, really flexible to create a report for you that, again, all I'm doing is clicking buttons <laughs> uh, and it's doing the work for me here.
Now, we all we need to do, because at the moment it's using quantity as its judge of what's the top five. So to fix it, all we need to do is put sales in there. So when, you, when it sees sales, because we've got a sales value column, I think it's going to use that. So here we go. Top five product code sales for widgets in Victoria. And there we go. We can see now it's using sales value. So insert the pivot table. And now it's using sales value as the uh, the measure of what the top five is. Uh, they're sorted. By the way, when you've got a sort in place in a pivot table, when you change the filter or when you refresh it, that sorting stays there. You don't have to change it at all. So it automatically resorts it with the new data uh, based on your selections or if you refresh the data. Uh, another term that you can use uh, when you're building it is insights. So let's say margin is important to us. So we can type in insights margin. Margin is a column in the data. And so it's going to provide some insights. And again, I'm not going to edit this, so that's how quick it is. So for Queensland, margin has outliers. Okay, so again, this could be useful for auditing purposes where you might want to look at uh, why things are outside the uh, normal thresholds. So we've got that. Let's have a look. We can do a insert a pivot chart. Uh, it's put these little dots on here to isolate the uh, entries that are outside uh, it's even it's even got the date there for you so the 7th of the 9th 11th of the 12th that's pretty impressive so it's giving you all of the entries but uh, yeah it's spotted them on the chart one of the concept I, I wanted to sort of test with it was whether it identified uh, what an invoice was so we've got an invoice uh, number here and so I tried something. So I wanted to find out if it understood about invoices. So I tried this one. What is the highest value invoice in New South Wales? So here we go. Now, this is doing a max of the invoice column. So that's probably my fault because invoice itself is actually a value so it's an invoice number so it's not alphanumeric it's a number so when i say when i said that what's the highest value invoice the ai has basically said oh okay that must be the maximum invoice so it's got the maximum of the invoice column which is the highest so if we filter over here by new south wales we should find that the last invoice number, if we go, this is in date sequence, uh, and there is the last invoice number, 38533. So it's found the highest invoice number, which is not quite what I was after. So again, you might need to do a little bit of trial and error to uh, get the, the, the result that you're after. So let's try sales value in the, uh, what is the highest sales value invoice in New South Wales. So again, just adding one word to that can make a difference. Here we go. Wow, that was quick. So it's saying that the highest sales value is um, 37399. So we can check that if we go, uh, if I manually create a pivot table, let's do that. So insert pivot table. So let's go and check that that is so let's go to TBL sales. So that's that's the name of the formatted table, by the way, TBL sales. So that's the source for the pivot. So I'm creating a pivot table manually here just to check on that uh, result. So I'm going to put the invoice in the rows and I'm going to put the state in the filters and I'm going to put the sales value in the values and I'm going to right click sort that uh, highest to lowest or largest to smallest. There we go. And then I'm going to filter by New South Wales. And the top invoice, 37399. So let's go back to our uh, data set, 37399. So it's correct. So it has, uh, I was worried because each of each line in the data is a separate line in an invoice. So it, I needed to make sure it was checking that the invoice 
uh, was added up basically. So there's multiple lines. Each invoice has got multiple lines. So it did work that correctly. And it's coming out with 12622, which in my, there it is, 12622, which is the value. Um, you can also use the term over time. So for example, we could go here. Oh, I did also do what customer has the highest sales value invoice in New South Wales. Um, and it picked up Metro Industries. So on that invoice, which is, I haven't put the name in there. So let's add the name to that. Uh, the, was it the customer? It is Metro Industries. So it's picking things up quite well. And I didn't have a space there either, so I still picked that up. Uh, okay, let's try something else. And I was gonna do that term over time. We can ask for um, sales over time for, uh, let's go Victoria. And there we go. Now, that is daily. So if we do, as you can see, it's got the date down the bottom. So what you can do is you can try, say, monthly sales over time. And then let's go look at the pivot chart there. And there you can see that's the months of the year. Now, as I said, the pivot charts aren't necessarily spectacular. Uh, it is rounding the thousands, which is interesting. So that's, that's, a, that's using a format to do that. You probably don't need sales value on the side there for the title. You can probably delete that because it's got sales value in the heading there. So very, very quick, very easy to create charts. You can talk about time. Um, it, I did test it with quarters, so it knows about quarters as well if you've got a, a, a big data set. Just be careful with the data you use with it. But it, the, the speed of it is um, reasonably amazing. So it is quite fast. I haven't edited any of the... Um, the time it's taken to generate these. I've left that uh, and not edited that. A couple of things though, when you're working with it, it only works with a single table at the moment. So in Power BI, there is a similar question uh, feature uh, and it does work across multiple tables. So Power BI is more powerful than in uh, Excel uh, in that in that respects, in, in most respects actually. You can relate tables together in Excel, but this analyzed data hasn't quite got there yet. So it's only working with a single table. Okay, so analyzed data worth having a look at. If you're new to pivot tables, it does uh, allow you to create pivot tables without actually having to do the, uh, you saw me create a pivot table here using the interface, but you can uh, get the analyzed data to create the pivot table for you. Uh, and then you can then adjust it when it's uh, doing things like adding the filters there. Uh, you can change it after it's created it for you. Oh, by the way, these headings don't update. These are these are typed in. So this one is for New South Wales. But if I change it to obviously Queensland here, that heading doesn't uh, doesn't update. So just uh, be aware of that. It's just a typed in heading that the AI typed in for you. Okay, so exciting times ahead with Excel. So analyze data uh, can help you look at the data. As you can see, there's it, it's useful for reporting. It's useful for auditing. So and he said, if you if you just be careful with the the data you do share with it at the moment, because I said it is going outside to use the AI. Okay, hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching.